Hey guys, so today we are going to look into something that I haven't done in a very, very long time. We are going to try to make a, uh, a level for the original Unreal Tournament. This is old software and there's really not a lot of tutorials left online for this software. So let's take a peek at the interface here. When you load her up, you got a window that you can close there and then you've got some of these. Top view, front view, side view, and then a three-dimensional view. While this is useful, I don't necessarily like working in this way all the time. And the way that we can change that is up in here, uh, view, viewports, uh, configure. And I'm just going to change to two windows right there. So now I can set this one to top, front, or side as I need to. And then this one I can see what's going on in three dimensions. So the basic idea with this particular editor is that all of the space that exists in the level is presently full of stuff and we have to remove uh, places to walk through. So over here we have our brushes. I'll select a rectangle brush and we'll get it in view here. I'm uh, left clicking and dragging around. I'm right clicking and dragging around and this is where things get weird. I am right and left clicking and dragging around. So it's definitely a different camera move scenario than any other editor I think I've ever used. Uh, but fortunately I remembered how that works. So um, both mouse buttons at the same time to move the camera up and down. Now if I want to change this brush, I can do it by dragging the points around here by clicking on a point. Let's see. Holding down control will move the brush around. Now I've got a little targeting reticle on there, so something is selected. If I hold down Alt and click that, I can drag that away. And if I move here, you can see that it actually pulled out. And um, it's important to note that you can't have surfaces like that, where it's not a flat surface. So you do need to make sure that if you move one, then you also move the other one to match. Now if I go there, that is a legitimate shape that will function. Okay, so let's treat this as the place where our first hollow is going to be. And this size uh, that it starts out one meter by one meter by one meter, that's enough to fit. I'm not sure if it's one meter. It may be a multiple of that. But I know uh, with the box starting that size, uh, the player will fit inside of it. But we want to make a, a slightly bigger room. And I want to scale this up. So let's see here. I know there's an easy way to do this. Brush properties. Brush. Main scale. So if I want to scale it in the X direction, twice as big. Easy. So there it's scaled twice as large in all three dimensions. I'll move my camera. Okay, now this is just a brush. It isn't anything yet. And I do want to cover how to move around this. Um, holding down both buttons allows you to zoom in and out on this one. So that's good to know. And being able to change between the view looks something like that. All right, so as I was saying, this is just a brush. We actually need to use this brush to subtract an area from the solid mass that we're working with. And that's in this section over here. You can add to the area, you can subtract from the area. Right now we want to subtract, so I'm going to click that. Now we have hollowed out 
a room. And you can kind of see that. As of right now, there is absolutely even lighting in there or no lighting, depending on how you want to think about it. If you move down and get your camera so you can see the ceiling, click on that surface and right click the surface, you can add a light here. So now we have a light in that room and that light has its own properties that you can adjust how big the light is, what color the light is, any of that sort of stuff. And you can move that light around. I think it's... Gotta remember which button it is to move. I thought it was control. Yeah, it's control. So holding down control and clicking on it moves it on that axis uh, with a left click. Holding down both allows you to move it up and down. So that's really like, unless you knew that, it would be hard to find it. So on here, we've got the top, front, and side, which you can select here. But you also have wireframe, um, where your textures are textured, and then dynamic light, zone, and portal stuff. And that's for making a wall that connects to a room that's somewhere else seeing where they are anyway. So we've got dynamic light, but nothing has been dynamically lighted yet. And that's up here. You can build the geometry, and then you can build the lighting. And once you build the lighting, you can actually see what effect your lights are going to be having. All right, now, the game won't know where to put anyone. So we need to come up with a spawn point. And to do that, we need to open up the actor class browser and find it in here. I believe it's under navigational points. Yep, spawn point there. So with that selected, come here on the floor, right click, and instead of adding the light, you can now add a spawn point. I think that's the right one that we're looking for. Though it could be a player start. Let me add that. Yeah, that looks better to me. So I'm going to select that one and delete it. So theoretically, this is all that we need to do to have a playable level. But with only one spawn point there, everyone is going to spawn at the same moment in the same place. So it's probably a good idea if we add a bit more uh, spawn territory to our level here. So I'm going to select this brush and move the brush over here and subtract some more. So now we've got a sort of complicated shape going on with two different rooms. And I want to add a player start here. I'm going to move down so I can see the ceiling and add a light in here. And then if I build my geometry and build my lighting, you can see I now have two rooms that both have lights in them and both have player starts. All right, so that's as simple as it is, and I will attempt to um, fire this up and play the map, and we can look at what it looks like on the inside. And there you go, a very quick and easy way of making an Unreal Tournament map in just a few minutes. Huh. 
We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.